Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Canadian lacrosse silver medalist, John <laughs> Horgan. How are you, sir? I'm very well, Donnie. Uh, good to see you. Um, Good to see you, Dally, and uh, I'm doing my uh, Drance impersonation here for you today. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you need to give us 10-minute answers if you're going to do that. Hey, you look great. I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> John Horgan, just uh, uh, moments before he talked about uh, how his uh, health is uh, yeah. so much better. Happy to hear Congratulations that. to the Premier on that, and we thank him for uh, joining us yesterday as we bring in uh, Thomas Drance from The Athletic to talk about the Canucks and the National Hockey League. How do you feel about that, getting the shout-out yesterday, Thomas, from the BC Premier? I'm tickled pink, which is why I'm wearing this shirt, gentlemen. Ah, the, uh, I, I appreciate getting roasted by the Premier and Dolly in, in concert. Um, you know, I, I texted Rick and I said, did, did the premier just rip me? And he said, yeah, and then I did. <laughs> and I said, yeah, Dolly, but that happens every day. It's not Absolutely. every day you get torched by the premier. That yeah, was no. special. No. Appreciate no. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, Rick had some Canuck information uh, earlier today, which I'm sure you uh, fed to him. But uh, <laughs> Bro Brock Besser and JT Miller, let's start with uh, JT Miller. Um, is he long for this hockey club? I think we've all sort of had a sense that if he was going to be long for this hockey club, if he was going to be around beyond this offseason, that it was going to require an extension. And from the team's perspective, honestly, when you look through everything they have coming and how they're positioned, when you look at the complication of the Besser situation, which we'll get into, you look at the fact that you've got Miller and Horvat, excuse me, both expiring after next season, and also Niels Hoaglander, and then the year after that, you're looking at Pedersen, Pod Colson, uh, throw Kuzmenko in the mix if he hits. You know, the club really had two options. And and this applies to both Miller and Bo Horvat. And that is to either get a team-friendly extension done. And it has to be a team-friendly extension, gentlemen, because the club just doesn't have the space to do, you know, to pay fair market value, to be totally honest with you, with some of their top six forwards who've outperformed their current contracts. And the bill comes due... When you have that sort of run of success, you can't afford to pay all those guys and support them with the sort of depth you need to have if you're going to do more than, you know, be in the wild card spot in this league. Uh, the other option, of course, is, is the trade. And, you know, for me, whatever route you go in, you have to go in that route decisively. Like, you have to be decisive this summer. You have to make a decision one way or another and act accordingly, ideally in the next three to four weeks. And, you know, if Miller's being shopped aggressively, uh, if they ever stopped, right? Like if they ever stopped, um, you know, I, I do think that suggests that it is more likely to go one way. I don't think that's a huge surprise, but, you know, the club's right to be making a firm decision one way or the other, keep or trade now, because your leverage diminishes the closer you get to the start of the season and the closer you get to the trade deadline, particularly with a player who's going to have options and whose own trade value is going to be tied up to some extent on what his extension demands are and his willingness to sign that deal as part of a trade. Thomas, uh, speaking of extension, uh, uh, Brock Besser, uh, here we are. We're just, I, I think we're 10 days away from, they, they got to qualify him somewhere, somewhere around there. Uh, they are talking. With two the, weeks. Yeah, two weeks. They are talking with the agent, Thomas. Uh, I don't get the sense they're close. Uh, what do you see happening there? So, with the Besser situation, you have to sort of navigate it using various, varying degrees, varying shades of not great, Rick. Um, you know, the first sort of pressure point that they're coming up on is actually July 2nd, where the club has the option to elect arbitration uh, for Besser. I don't expect them to do that. Arbitration is a deeply uncertain process. The, the benefit of it from a team perspective is that you can seek to reduce his compensation, they, they could get a little bit more than a million of relief going that route, but that relief isn't guaranteed. You see the ability to choose the term to the player, uh, and, then, and then you're committing to having cap uncertainty on a really important top-line piece into the middle of the summer, which, you know, sucks. So uh, I don't see the club doing that. You also, of course, risk damaging the relationship. Uh, there's the trade option, 
I, I suppose that's somewhat realistic, but the problem with that is that Besser's qualifying offer makes him something of a distressed asset. This is a guy who's a 30-goal, 65-point per 82-game player over nearly 350 games in his NHL career to this point, and he's capable, like he's good enough as a two-way piece, too, that he can hold up in a matchup role, and if you trade him now, you're trading for cents on the dollar because his qualifying offer situation, which is so complicated, is also something other teams don't necessarily want to take on, you know, you get to the one year qualifying offer deadline, which is July one, you tender him a qualifying offer. History indicates the most likely outcome for this is that the club will tender Besser a $7.5 million qualifying offer. He'll accept that. That's one times 7.5. Uh, that's, that's not great either. 7.5 is a, is a lot of money. It's an inconvenient level to pay Besser at. And then the final one is you don't tender him, in which case you lose a really valuable asset for nothing. Something this club absolutely cannot afford to have happen considering how little value and how asset poor they have, you know, in the stables up and down the, the sort of levels of this club. Um, none of those options are great boys. Like none of those options are great. And the only possible outcome here that is in any way favorable for the team is finding a way to do a compromise deal two or three years that reduces the cap hit. And to do that, you've got to make it worth Besser's while uh, which is going to require a fair bit of creativity and, and honestly, probably a fair bit of upfront expense for the organization. It, it's a really tough one. Um, you know, I, I'm expecting at this point that the club qualifies him and that he accepts that, that if they can manage any outcome better than that, that will be a huge home run for Tom Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin. Uh Thomas, uh, this happened after we uh, just actually middle of the show. Mm -hmm. Dale Talon, senior advisor and pro scout. I, I don't know if you're, path crossed with uh, in, in Florida in Florida when you two were there uh but I, it, your thoughts on Dale Talon getting uh, hired by the Canucks oh I know Dale very well yeah, um, yeah I, I, I thought so yeah you know Dale's a quality I, I think Dale's a pretty good talent evaluator uh probably better on the amateur side to be totally honest with you than the pro side I think he's had has a great track record of nailing those first round picks anyway um you know this organization has made some really interesting, confidence-inspiring hires, I think, in the management front, in, their, in staffing their front office department. And, you know, I know that Dale and Jim are close going back years, so clearly there's some familiarity there. But ultimately, you know, this does not feel a part of some of the different types of hires and the different types of ideas that they've brought in. All of that said, you know, sometimes these pro scout senior advisor jobs are, are honorifics more than they are super impactful hires. Uh, I'm sure it'll be useful for Rutherford and Alvin to have an experienced hand to uh, talk shop with, I suppose, we'll work through some some things with. But, you know, this does feel like a different type of hire than than some of the other ones that this cl club has made in staffing their hockey operations group. Um, and I think as a result, you're going to see and, and quite rightly, fans respond with a fair bit less confidence than the sort of goodwill and credibility that Rutherford and Alvin have built to this point in the market uh, by bringing in some really sharp people. Mm. Uh, Thomas, by the way, first time we've had a chance to talk to you since the Canucks officially signed Andre Kuzmenko. What do you think he's going to add to this uh, to this team? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, the, we'll see about the skating. We'll see how certain things translate uh, once he's in an NHL environment. You know, looks pretty good at the net front on the power play for Ska, but it's a very different assignment, Donnie, uh, on the international ice sheet than it is, yes. you know, on, on the NHL ice sheet, particularly, you know, Kuzmenko makes a lot of plays behind the net. Well, net front guys in the NHL don't spend a lot of time there. They're, they're sort of in the, in the thick of things, uh, it, you know, in the dirty areas of the ice. I think there's a chance that his playmaking – is really impactful at the NHL level. I think there's a chance that he has that tofoli like impact at the net front for the Canucks on the power play. That would be a huge jab. More than anything for me, though, whether he hits or not, right, regardless, he's a low-risk, high-upside bet, the type of which the Canucks need to find seven or eight other bets like this to place over the next few years. Some of them, in fact, the majority of them will be misses. But if you keep stepping into that batter box and taking swings, you know, you'll probably hit a couple doubles. And this team could desperately use a couple of, you know, um, cost-effective doubles here in filling out the, the depth and balance of this lineup. Thomas, thanks for this. We'll talk to you next week. I'll Anytime, say hi to the gentlemen. Premier. Cheers.